My name is Kevin Gleason. I'm here with Army beat writer Sal Interdonato. Sal, obviously Army's coming off a huge win. Tell me a little bit about that Duke game and how they were able to manage such a huge win down there. Uh, pretty simple, Kevin. Turnovers, they uh, created, uh, caused five Duke turnovers. Two were pretty early. Uh, Steve Anderson interception, he returned it inside the five. And Donnie Dixon's interception, he returned it to the five. And Army just punched it in. They were up 14-0. They were up 35-7 in the, in the second half. And uh, I think Coach Ellerson was a little disappointed in the play toward the end of the game where some of the second stringers got in. He wants maximum effort from every guy on the team. And they gave up two late touchdowns. One was um, on a deep ball where it looked like Dixon came up a little lame on the coverage. I looked like he uh, had a little hamstring issue there. And, uh, you know, he, he how can you not be happy with a 35-21 victory at Duke at an ACC opponent first win? on the road against an ACC opponent since 1971 for Army. Mm -hmm. But uh, Coach Ellerson, I mean, perfectionist. He, he, wants a, he wants his team to go all out every play. And uh, so they have some things to work on this week uh, heading into Temple. Boy, I have to tell you, you know, I was surprised at that one. That was one that I, I just didn't know if Army was quite ready for and knowing their track record of, of losing uh, on the road against ACC teams. And I guess that was kind of uh, one of those games that told you that they're serious about contending for a bowl game. Yeah, I think, you know, you get three wins in, in your first four games. And, I, you know, looking at that game a little bit more closely, maybe I gave uh, Duke's offense a little bit too much credit. I mean, Army was able to uh, come up with a scheme that just totally threw uh, Duke quarterback Sean Renfrey off from the start. And um, I, maybe I didn't give Army's defense enough credit heading into that game. They were coming off a shutout win against North Texas. Now they shut out Duke. And... Um, they head into a game against Temple where Temple's offense is, uh, I mean, they've scored eight touchdowns on offense all season. Right. And so, I mean, Army gets to 20 in this game. I think they win it easily. Right, yeah. You mentioned their defense. I mean, they're plus five at Duke and plus nine overall turnover ratio on the season. That's going to win you a lot, of, uh, a, lot, a lot of games in the season. Um, tell me a little bit about that defense and how they can maybe kind of dictate the tempo on Saturday against Temple, a really tough Temple team, a Temple team that uh, was down for a million years until Al Golden took over and uh, in, in many respects has a lot in common with Army because they were down for so many years and, and, and that program has been resurrected. Uh, can, can Army kind of dictate the Temple defensively on Saturday, do you think? It's pretty simple. Temple wants to run the ball. They want to grind it out. Uh, they're not a very good passing team. So if Army controls the line of scrimmage, this game's going to be, I, I hate, I, I'm going to say it's going to be one of the trenches. trenches. Um, I think the defensive line, if they hold their ground against a pretty huge Temple offensive line, I think Army has a good chance. Um, Temple star running back Bernard Pierce uh, has an ankle injury. He's a game time decision on, on Saturday. He scored six of their eight offensive touchdowns. So if he doesn't play, I mean, I think Army has a great chance. Uh, Temple's going to throw in a little smaller back, Matt Brown, into the game. He's 5'5", 170 pounds, and they still run in between the tackles with him. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, I was talking to Al Golden this week, and he says, oh, he can, he, get, he can get lost in that big offensive line and gain some yards. Well, that didn't happen against Penn State last week. So if Army watches a little bit of tape against Penn State, I think they can come up with a scheme to uh, to stop Brown if Pierce doesn't play. You mentioned that Penn State game, and uh, you're not now we're talking about a team in Temple that led Penn State at halftime. I mean, this is a this is a pretty uh, big time performance out of Temple before losing that game. I mean, how much uh, momentum do you think Temple can carry out of that game coming into West Point? Well, um, their defense played well. Temple, uh, Penn State got in the uh, red zone five times and only had one touchdown. They held them to four other field goal attempts. Um, I don't think they have much momentum in this second half. I mean, after Pierce went out in the third quarter, Temple's offense did nothing against Penn State. I watched that tape over and over again. Their quarterback, uh, Chester Stewart, did, came into the game without an interception. He threw three in the second half, and I think he was just trying to do too much with Pierce out of the game. So I, I, I guess they can hang their hat and say, hey, we played, we led at the half against Penn State, but I think that Temple's disappointed in their second half performance of that game, and they're going to come out pretty much fired up in the in the first half against Army, and if Army can just uh, hold their own and get off to a good start and get a couple touchdowns, I think that this game is Army's. Well, you mentioned Army's offense now. That, that, that kind of leads us to where they're at uh, offensively. 
The running game's been terrific. I think, you know, they're using a lot of guys. They don't have that one star. Uh, even at fullback, you know, Hassan's been hurt a little bit with the back. And uh, they just seem to have a lot of depth back there in the backfield. And now you see Steelman getting, what, a couple touchdown passes at Duke. It seems like uh, teams might be overplaying that run now or finally going to pay for it with Steelman being able to throw off of it. I mean, how much do you think that offense has improved uh, not only from last season, but maybe even from, you know, week one? I mean, is that offense, do you see that uh, a trend that's going to continue to get better and better? Yeah, I was talking to uh, Steelman and then Pat Mealy yesterday, and they, they said the sky's the limits for this offense. I think it really shows how deep and how much depth Coach Ellison has built on the offense. I mean, Mealy didn't play. He was dressed, but they held him out last week against Duke. He didn't play. Raymond Maples and John Crusetti, freshman, stepped in for Mealy, right. and they didn't really miss a beat. I mean, they're steady guys. And the thing is, to ask a freshman to come into a game and play pretty much you know, without any mistakes, and that means running the offense, blocking, uh, Maples made a touchdown catch. I mean, these guys are ready to play right off the bat as freshmen. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Maples went went to the prep school, school, but Crescetti's a true freshman, and you know they they are they're just Army's depth uh, uh, at the skilled positions, especially running back, has been pretty impressive this year. Two final questions. One being that uh, it seems like just uh, the the feel that I get around this team, and you're around them a lot more than I am, so that's why you can comment on it. Is the belief system that they have right now, and how how much how strongly they believe that they can win every game. I mean, how how much of that do you feel being around them and, and being at their games? Are they right now of the mindset where they can you know they can go and win eight nine games? Uh, I, I, In their minds, they can they think they can win. I think more. they can compete with anybody on their schedule, and that includes uh, Rutgers and Notre Dame. I, I said that last week, and I just think that um, their offense hasn't really been stopped this year. They. they the least amount of points they've scored in the game is 24, and I think that you know it's. Let's see somebody stop Army's offense first, and, and then, then you know then we can uh, talk about games being you know see where the games go. Um, I think that schedule if if they can get this win against Temple, they're uh, mm -hmm. they're travel on the road to Tulane, and they play uh, Rutgers at the New Meadowlands Stadium. They're gonna come. They're gonna come up with probably five wins out of their first seven first games, seven. and you, know, then you only need one of your next four. To be bowl eligible, and you got BMI on your schedule. No offense against BMI, but sure. they're one double A team, and that should be an Army win. Now they're, you're right; they're expecting that they're coming to, to the field expecting the win. Uh, Stephen Anderson told me, linebacker for Army, they don't take any opponent lightly, but they just coming in with a confidence that they can compete with anybody on the field, and uh, they're showing it this year so far. Yeah, finally, I was going to mention the schedule. You know, you're talking about Temple this week, and. And then at Tulane, and then they go over to uh, the new Meadowlands Stadium, which is a real original name for a new stadium, by the way, uh, <laughs> to play Rutgers. You know, I mean, Rutgers isn't exactly beating the world either. The way they're playing, their offense is kind of shaky lately. So, I mean, really, you know, uh, not to get ahead of ourselves. Well, I guess we can get ahead of ourselves. Let's get ahead of the media. ourselves, yes. But, you know, I mean, you figure when two out of those three, uh, they're in terrific shape, five and two. Uh, looking at the long haul now, do you have to reevaluate? number of wins you thought this team would win or uh, are you going to stick with your number? Uh, slightly. I had seven in the in the spring and I kept it in the uh, preseason heading into the um, this team's a lot better than I thought they were. I have to say that they're a lot deeper. I think they're a, uh, even deeper than coach Ellerson thought they were. I mean to have guys come off the bench like we talked about um, they uh, they started the season off after the first game down their two whip linebackers and uh, Chad Littlejohn stepped in. Uh, they they Use different schemes against passing teams like Hawaii and Duke, where they played sometimes five defensive backs, and they have plenty of experience in the defensive backfield. This team, I mean, <laughs> sometimes I think they could. This could be a, a 1996 season when they went 10 and two. Uh, I, I think that this game against Temple is really going to tell us even more about this team. We already know that they're. Mm -hmm. This is a quality team. Now you, you beat Temple, one of the rising programs in the Northeast, and I talked to Al Golden about this, and uh, he mentioned uh, there's no doubt in his mind that Army is one of the rising programs in the country. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Al Golden's saying that he's been through it. He's, he's sure. taken Temple from the depths of, of, of Division One college football and made them relevant. Um, I think that's a, that's a good, um, when he's giving you some kudos, that's a, that's a good sign for the program. And uh, I, I tell you, <laughs> eight or nine wins is not going to surprise me right now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an exciting time for Army football, that's for sure. And uh, for uh, Sal Interdonato, I'm Kevin Gleason, signing off from Record Online.